Did you know that dry eyes is not a problem for just a handful of people? In fact, billions of people worldwide may be affected by dry eyes. Studies show that about 5 to 50% of people could be suffering from dry eyes. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Tran and I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. And today, I'm going to go over everything you need to know about dry eyes, from the signs, symptoms, to natural treatment, as well as medications and procedures we can utilize to take care of your dry eyes. Let's begin. First, let's dive into the fascinating anatomy of tears. Tears are not just salt water. In fact, there's three main components to your tears. The first layer is the oil layer, and it's the outermost layer. The oil is made by the meibomian glands, which are these oil glands located in your eyelids. Their function is to reduce evaporation from your tears and to provide a smooth layer for your tears. Next, we have the aqueous layer, which is basically the watery layer of your tears. It's made up of various water, electrolytes, and it's made by your lacrimal gland. This layer provides oxygen and other nutrients for the surface of the eye, and it helps flushes debris away. Finally, there's the mucin layer, and that's the innermost layer. The mucin layer is made by the goblet cells on the eye. The mucin layer spreads evenly and provides a smooth layer for the rest of the tears to adhere to the surface of the eye. And if you're missing any of these components in your tears, your tears can become unstable, thus evaporating very quickly. But what causes dry eyes? Well, there's two main mechanisms. Number one, your tears can evaporate much quicker. And number two, you actually could be making a lot less tears. And when it comes to insufficient tear production, there's many factors. Number one, of course, is aging. As you get older, you tend to make less tears. Hormonal changes like menopause can also decrease tear production as well. There's actually various autoimmune conditions that can decrease tear production. So the most infamous one is called Sjogren's syndrome. It's when your lacrimal glands produce less tears. In fact, there's also a correlation with your parotid glands, which are responsible for producing saliva. So that's why sometimes we do get a biopsy in the mouth to diagnose Sjogren's syndrome. Other autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus can be associated with decreased tear production. Also, there are certain medications like antihistamine that can lead to decreased tear production as well. On the other hand, increased tear evaporation is a whole different ball game. Remember the anatomy and the three components of the tears that we talked about? Well, if you're missing any of those components, that can lead to tear evaporation. So many people are suffering from a condition called meibomian gland dysfunction. And remember, the meibomian gland is responsible for producing the oil layer in your tears. You might be surprised to find out that your tears could be perfectly normal, and yet you still can suffer from dry eyes. Well, how? The environment actually plays a major role as well. If you live in a dry area or somewhere where there's a lot of wind, your tears can evaporate quickly. Also, there are people with various eyelid issues as well. Some eyelids turn in, some turn out, some eyelids droop down, and other people have an incomplete blink. If you have those issues as well, your tears can evaporate even faster. And let's not forget our modern lifestyle. If you're scrolling on TikTok, watching YouTube, watching Netflix, you blink less. With your eyelids open more, the tears can evaporate from the surface of the eyes. So as you can see, there's a variety of causes of dry eyes, and that makes sense that the treatment targets each different causes of dry eyes. But before we talk about the treatment of dry eyes, let's talk about the symptoms that you might be facing. Dry eyes classically has that sandy, gritty sensation. But that's not all. The dry eyes can be so bad that patients can report painful eyes, eyes that burn and sting constantly. Now here's a peculiar paradox. Dry eyes can cause you to have a lot of tearing. In fact, that's actually one of the most common complaints that I hear about in my clinic. Isn't dryness the problem? Here's the secret. When your eyes are dry, they become irritated and they send messages to your lacrimal glands saying, hey, I'm dry, I need lubrication and protection. Well, your lacrimal gland responds by releasing all those tears. But remember, the lacrimal gland is responsible for making the watery component of the tears. That means your tear film will be unstable. So despite making more tears, these tears will evaporate more, thus, 
it does not solve the dry eye issue. Dry eyes can also contribute to eye fatigue, basically the sensation that your eyes are tired and you need to take a break. This is especially common if you've been working all day. And finally, blurred vision can also occur. So if you're a physics geek, you know that the air tear film is the most important at bending light towards the back of the eye. But if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. Imagine driving down the road on a rainy day. Pay attention to that dry spot and the wet spot. Traffic looks different depending on where you look, right? If you have dry spots and wet spots on the eye, the light ray bends differently into your eye. That's what causes you to have blurred vision. Of course, dry eyes can also cause other symptoms including light sensitivity and eye itching. Dry eyes causes a lot of different symptoms. Treating dry eyes early is so important because dry eyes and its symptoms can quickly spiral out of control. It's a vicious cycle. Dry eye leads to inflammation, and inflammation, of course, leads to more dry eyes. Let's take a look at this infographic for just a little bit more detail. When something disturbs what makes up the tears, they become unstable. That means they evaporate very quickly. With evaporation, your tears have become hyperosmolar. With the saltier environment, the cornea and the conjunctival cells undergo apoptosis, meaning they're damaged and they eventually die. As the cells are damaged, they release various inflammatory markers to recruit more white blood cells into the area, thus triggering inflammation. Together, the inflammatory cells damage the goblet cells, which make the mucin layer. It also damages the lacrimal gland, which makes the tears. And of course, inflammation can also damage the mybobian glands, which also affects the lipid layers of the eyes. That means the lipid layer, the aqueous layer, and the mucin layers are all affected by inflammation. This leads to further tear instability, and guess what? The cycle repeats itself. The whole cycle does seem a little bit complex, but it brings up a few key points. It shows us that there's a cycle and we need to break this if we are to adequately take care of dry eyes. We can see why there's so many different treatment points for dry eyes. That's because there's so many different areas along the cycle of dry eyes that we can address. There's of course natural and over-the-counter treatments, there's prescriptions, and there's also procedures that we can do. And most of the time, I'm incorporating a combination of therapies to treat dry eyes in my patients. To take care of dry eyes though, there's a lot of treatment options and we'll start with the natural ones first. Taking regular breaks is so important to help prevent dry eyes. A rule of thumb I like using is the 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, take 20 short seconds to look at something 20 feet away. This will allow you to relax your eyes and also by blinking will help push tears down, thus addressing dry eyes. Another approach is to use warm compress. Warm compress heats up the eyelids and remember those mybobian glands that are producing the oil layer for the tears? Heat will allow those oil glands to melt so that the oil can get to the surface of the eyes microwavable heat mask in this sense are so helpful for this. Also changing your environment can be pretty critical too. Things like getting a humidifier, turn off the ceiling fan. These are small things you can do to help address dry eyes. Additionally, by practicing good lid hygiene and cleaning your eyelashes, you can help prevent mybobian gland dysfunction, thus addressing the oil layer in your tears. Speaking of the oil layer, don't forget about the omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s are essential at producing healthy oil, and so by eating a diet full of rich omega-3 fatty acids, that can help address dry eyes as well. And last, let's not forget about one of my favorite over-the-counter treatments for dry eyes, artificial tears and nightly gels. They're so simple, and there's really not any downside at using them. I recommend using the artificial tears four times a day and the nightly gel just right before bedtime. In case where natural treatments are not available, there's actually a lot of medications and procedures we can do to help take care of dry eyes. Remember that inflammatory cycle that we talked about? Well, there are medications that specifically target the inflammatory mediators as well. Steroid eye drops may be used for short term, but we need to monitor for side effects such as glaucoma and cataracts. Zydrosecone restases also address inflammation, but they have a lot less side effects as compared to steroids. 
These medications all work a little bit differently, so one may work for you and others may not. Oral medications like doxycycline may also be prescribed as part of dry eyes. Doxycycline is an antibiotic, but we're using doxycycline for its anti-inflammatory components. It also helps the oil glands in your eyelids, and it can actually reduce a lot of the bacterial growth that can contribute to MGD. In addition, there's actually a pretty unique medication that increases tear production, and that is the nasal spray called Tirvaya. It works by binding various nerves inside the nose to trigger a reflex that makes you produce more tears. Aside from medications, there's a couple procedures we can do to take care of dry eyes. The first is called a punctal plug. In this procedure, we place little drain stops in the puncta. And remember, the puncta is where all the tears drain from your eyes to go into your nose. So by placing these punctal plugs, you trap what tears you're making, thus helping address dry eyes in that manner. Another procedure targets the oil layer of tears. There's a few procedures and devices out there called Lipoflow and Tear Care. They're both similar in that they apply heat to the eyelids, and remember, the heat melts the clogged oil glands. The end result is that by melting the oil glands, there's more oil content in your tears, and it prevents your tears from evaporating. By exploring these procedures alongside various lifestyle changes and these medications, it's actually a good time to be taking care of dry eyes. Regardless of what therapy or therapies you might need, there's one final critical point. Your dry eyes took months to years to get this bad, so don't expect one treatment to get you that cure overnight. Everything takes time. Consistency is key in the therapy of dry eyes. Think about dry skin. If you lotion once, do you expect your skin to stay moist forever? The answer is no. You need to moisturize daily. Similarly, you need to be dedicated to your dry eye treatment to see the results that you want. So don't lose hope if you don't get immediate results. Remember, with time and consistent care, relief is within reach. Thank you for watching as always, and don't forget, your eyes tell. We'll see you next time.